Miami's got its first lead tonight here inside Worthen Arena. It is eight to five here in the third set. Ball State up two sets to nothing. It is also Dig Pink Night in the arena, Breast Cancer Awareness Night. All proceeds going to the Side Out Foundation. Cardinals about 60% of that $1,000 goal at this point. The website there you can find to make donations or head to ballstatesports.com. Always good when you use athletics as a vessel kind of for those greater goods. Yes, everyone gets more excited about it. You see the Cardinals in pink accoutrements today. Jenna Spadafora did touch that one on its way out, so Miami presses its lead to four. Carolyn Condon's team has all the momentum. Yeah, it's their first lead of, of the night. And if you look at their hitting stats, you can tell the, the biggest difference is now Ball State is hitting 195 and Miami's out attacking them at 217. And the block for Miami. The percentage continues to drop down for Ball State. Cards are actually now on the lower end of hitting percentages in the match. And it forces another timeout. Yeah, and we, we talk about this every match, is that they start off so well. Ball State always starts to play strong. And every time during the third set, or even sometimes the second set, is when they start to play a little less aggressively. Let's take another look at the uh, Dig Pink Side Out Foundation set up here for tonight. What's cool about the Side Out Foundation, too, and what's different is that second bullet point there, too, Alyssa Rio. Every bit of money that goes to it funds cutting edge treatments for those with stage four breast cancer. Stage four is pretty much um, no turning backstage. So it's trying to find solutions at the, the deepest stages of a disease that will claim more than 40,000 lives in America this year. And that's not just women. One in 100,000 men are also diagnosed with breast cancer every year. Terrible disease, but uh, fantastic that teams across college athletics in every sport come together and do what they can to raise awareness. So 10-5 is where we stand here in the third set. And Miami has Ball State playing defense. Maris Bilo to serve, just five aces on the season. So you're likely to get something you can handle. Capello, slight overpass. And Miami's able to take advantage. Well, it's a difficult ball ball to set. Um, but with, with a topspin serve, you want to treat it just like a dig. It has a true flight, which means it's not going to move as it travels at you. And you got to be able to cushion that ball. But treat it just like a dig, just like that. Big swing. And Ball State gets the kill. Amanda Raker is having the day of her season. Former basketball player at Butler. Transferred to Ball State to play volleyball. It's working out tonight. Tight set for Engel. You can see the power with the height on these digs. And that one put down on the outside for Katie Thomasick. A lot of diversity, but none of it named Engel. Or at least not as often as Miami would like, although up six, you'll take it at this point. And that's what we've talked about earlier tonight, people rallying to help when you can't get the perfect pass to the middle. Miami's going to do the same thing here, go outside for Rusick. Ball State outside for Filling. Filling again, tip drill. Nicely dug out by Brokoskis, although the setter puts it out of system. And Ball State winds up with the point on the long shot. And I think what caused that error, error for Below is she dropped her arm a little bit, causing her having to hit underneath the ball and sends it a little bit long. You always want to be behind the ball. Yes, you want to be behind the ball. You want your elbow high. You don't want it dropped below um, to keep that ball in front of you and high. That's where you create that downward angle. Got underneath that one, too. Cardinals dug it out. Takes your power, takes your vision away, too. Yeah, and actually, I really like that set from uh, from the Red Hawks. Um, I think their libero, McDonald, does a great job. Um, a lot, you, the setter can't, or the libero can't set in front of the 10-foot line, and when you get close, you can have one foot over it without actually hitting the ground, and she she's very versatile in that she can set both players effectively. Too strong on the push there for Russick. 
And that's important when Miami runs a 6-2. You need other people that can set, because like what we just saw a couple points ago, sometimes Burkowskis or Zelinski will take the serve. Somebody else has to come in and keep things going. Yeah, McDonald does a great job, and she actually has really good hands. It, I would guess she had done some setting in her career. There's Kukoc with the cross court. Dug out Vasilakis, and then tooling the block, Ball State. I don't think Alex Filling knows quite how she scored that one. Yeah, she was not intending to get a point out of that. <laughs> no, it's a, it was an awkward angle, and honestly, if you're an outside hitter at that point, you, you would try to hit over the block, um, and obviously Miami didn't put up a great block, and that's why she was able to get the tool. This is a 4 nothing Ball State run at this point, and probably a really good timeout for Carolyn Condon, if for no other reason than just to stop momentum and try to kind of hit a reset button here mid-set. Yeah, it, it, it causes the other team to think a little bit. Once you go on a run, momentum is so important in, important in volleyball. Um, so be, to be able to stop that momentum, um, I've actually had people stop and tie a shoe just to stop the momentum because it is that important in volleyball. Alex Filling with that last kill gives her eight. That is the match high. Ties her with Paige Hill for Miami. Take a look at what Alex Filling means to this team. When she's healthy, has led the team eight times in 10 matches in kills. She's been injured, had the knee issue, kept her out of a couple of matches, kept her back row only in a couple matches. You see the impact that having her in there makes. Kelly Hopkins is the lifeblood of the offense. She's the middle. That's what gets set first. But when Alex Filling is in there, there's just a difference. Yeah, and there's always that one person on the team that just kind of has that aura about her that when she's in, she causes the team to succeed, and that's Filling for the Cardinals. There's a comfort factor, I imagine, too, when you have somebody like that. Right, and you, you know that there's a pretty good um, chance that she's going to score, and there's a lot more comfort in knowing that, you know, you have multiple options on the court. All three of Ball State's coaches, Kelly Miller, Fritz Rosenberg, Steve Shondell, all said when she's at her best this year, she looks like an All-American. Stella Kukic able to get the kill there for Miami. And that's what you want coming out of a timeout. And also coming out of the timeout, you get Paige Hill back in the lineup, which is good news up front for Miami. All-American, those aren't words you just throw around. She has to be playing well if you've got all three coaches saying, yeah, no, we agree, that's how good she can be. Yeah, that's a very, very big compliment um, for Philly and should give her some confidence too, but that's that's a huge compliment to hear that from three of your coaches. You know, Hopkins tools the block there. The other thing Alex does when she's healthy is that that complements Kelly Hopkins. You've got two great offensive performers, and it gives you that diversity up front. It keeps a defense on its toes. Everything works in concert. Yeah, and what we've seen a lot of this season is relying so much on, on Hopkins. It makes Ball State really easy to defend, so having both of them being able to play well um, gives gives Ball State a lot more opportunity to create points. So we see Paige Hill get right involved in the offense as soon as she's back on the court. Misses Long, though. That's her first error tonight. Went I'd, from 571 to 460. If I would have gotten, if I would have gotten a good pass, I would have set Hill again. I think they're going to set her as much as possible. Not on that one. Right down in front of Zelinski, the setter in the back row, and Mackenzie Kitchell trying to pace filling here. They're fighting over the kills lead tonight. Filling's going to need an ace to match her. Outside, Rusick. Spadafora, a lot of offense today. Dumped it again. And Rusick, the free ball. Slide play for Hopkins. Gets it, tooling the block. Rusick and Hill. And with that kill, Ball State finally takes the lead. And, and they were down by quite a bit. So to be able to come back means you haven't made a lot of errors, and that's why they're playing well at this point. This is a 7-2, 7-3 Ball State run. I feel like that always happens when we do that. Yeah, they say broadcasts can't jinx things that happen on the court. I think we've done that every time. I, I beg to differ, yeah. I don't want to give us too much credit. But. <laughs> We're pretty important. <laughs> I'll give us credit. <laughs> Block at the line, and Ball State able to tool it. Cardinals are doing everything right here. Miami's got bodies there. Maybe just not getting the penetration over the net, but whatever it is, Ball State's finding the right angle. Yeah, and sometimes that's all it is, is swing, and it hits the block in a weird way, and you get the kill. Tough set. 
Kukoc off the top of the net. There's a good one for Hill. That's where they go. Nicely dug by Schweiner, the freshman. And then the Cardinals put it away at the pin. Miami got what it wanted there. Page just couldn't finish it off, Page Hill. Yeah, and Miami's actually making it harder for their back row players to play defense just because of the type of touches they're getting on the block. Um, it's either tooled out of bounds or it's tooled down to the floor, and you can't play defense around that. Outside for Kukoc, one-handed set there. And then Kitchell, again, almost accidentally, Cardinals winding up with kills on the outside. This is what we talked about early, Ball State trying not to make errors. They're just pushing the ball over, saying, you know what, we don't have a great look, we'll live to play another point. And then the ball's falling. Yeah, and you don't have to swing at every single ball. Smart hitters, great attackers, are not going to swing at every ball. They're gonna hit shots. And right now, Miami's struggling with their block, so they're able to get away with two in the block often. 17-14 forces Carolyn Condit to call the timeout. This is now a 9-3 run in favor of Ball State. Something else we haven't mentioned tonight, too. You take a look at the huddle. If you look at the back row, it's the people that have not played tonight. Steve Shondell has gone to the veterans. Emily Holland, who we see often, is a freshman who's played very well at times. Brooklyn Goodsell has played exceedingly well at times. They're true freshmen, and Steve Shondell has said, for every good thing they do, there's a bad thing that creeps in there. They're young, they're new. Sometimes you expect that. He's going to the veterans. They've played really well, and he hasn't had to go to the freshmen. That's the recipe for success, and it's going to be for the rest of that schedule. Yeah, and I think I think it's it's a kind of says a lot about having veterans on the court. We talk about it, but you actually see the impact that it has. They they're comfortable in pressure situations. They know what to do. They've been playing with each other for longer than the freshmen. Um, so that's why there's so much more chemistry on the court, and that's why you're able to succeed. Bailey Balmer, one of those veterans serving. She's become something of a serving specialist for the Cardinals as the year has gone on. A lot in her arsenal. Does the popcorn, does the rainbow, does the normal straight serve that you just see. Hill kept that alive with her shoulder. That's a chicken wing. That's what you call a chicken wing when you. <laughs> Buried in the back row. Mackenzie Kitchell again. She sent McDonald sprawling. I feel like we've opened up a whole dictionary of vocabulary. We just dropped chicken wing, popcorn, and rainbow in a span of three seconds. <laughs> chicken wing is a legitimate volleyball term. That one <laughs> off of filling. There's a shank. Yes, another legitimate volleyball term. Popcorn and rainbow. At the I think those were Steve-inspired. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe other people use it, but. Popcorn serve high and straight down. Rainbow's got bigger arc to it. Dump again for Spadafora, continuously attacking from the center spot. Nice save, Vasilakis, and filling the free ball. Hill wants it, instead the outside. Ricewig hit it off the libero. And actually throughout this match, we've seen... A double touch. Yes. But we've seen some really good rallies between the two teams. I think they're both playing great defense. They're both getting great touches on the balls, and it's creating um, long rallies. And the ones that win are the ones that can put the ball on the floor. This third set was 12-6 Miami. It has switched big time. And I think that is a great example of how the Slide pressure. Slide play for Hill there is huge. Sorry, there we go. No, that's okay. I think. I think that kind of shows how important um, playing well is throughout the entire match. That's an important point, because even though Ball State is on such a huge run, Miami's only down three. So you're, you're not out of the woods if you're Ball State right now. Miami has a chance, quite literally, here. This will likely be a free ball. Good set for Ball State for Kitchell. Outside Tomasic, and Miami's coming right back. Red Hawks are now within two. Miami doesn't want to go quickly here. It's lost 3-0 just three times this season. Though well, it's only lost seven times. Quick shoot set. Raker. 
She's had a good night, but that one was long. Second error for Raker. That's in 13 attacks today. Amanda Raker came in hitting 060, or pardon, hitting 118 for the year. She's hitting 500 tonight. Kitchell right back at her. Coverage wasn't there. Good block by Miami. And we are tied. Red Hawks rebounding beautifully late here in the third. Yeah, and I think at this this play, Kitchell doesn't have much choice. The ball's a little bit inside, a little bit tight. Really, the only place she had to go was straight into the block. So Brakowskis on the service now for Miami. And the Cardinals go slide play with Raker. Double touch again. Alyssa Rio, you caught one, or you caught that before our top official, Carl Koopman, did today. Yeah, it, it came out, it, it's a hard ball to set. If you're moving as you're trying to set, a lot of times um, it can be called a double, and the way that that ball came out of her hands, it was spinning. What do you, you look for the spin, that's what gives away a double touch? Um, yeah, you can, you don't, as when you're setting, you want to have that ball come out clean, it shouldn't be moving. If there's a lot of spin on that ball, um, it means that you hit one with one hand first, and then the other hand at that second time, and that's what causes that spin. Cardinals now have a two-point advantage, so just as soon as Miami tied it, they've fallen back behind. Outset for Tomasic, and handcuffed Jenna Spatafora there. Nice shot by Tomasic on the outside. Miami's leading outside hitter in the kill department. Another double touch. And that's just, she's not getting her feet there. Um, and that's what causes that double set, is when your feet aren't there, your hands aren't there, and that ball hits both hands at the same time and causes spin. Ball State on the precipice here, up two sets, nothing. We're going to Ingle, Miami. That's the bread and butter. That's the second touch and an overpass. It was a free ball, but earlier than Miami wanted. Set the right side, Ricewig. Long run, Capello. It is alive. Brakowskis and a big swing. Boy, Tomasic buried that. Yeah, you could tell she really wanted that ball. That's a great save by Ball State, um, but an even better attack by Tomasic. Sophomore out of Livonia in Michigan. Somebody who Carolyn Condit wishes was a redshirt freshman. Hindsight, wished she would have shirted her a year ago, but has used that experience well. Ball State goes to filling. And now it's a match point. This is not what I think we expected tonight. They rise to their feet in Muncie. Ball State trying to snap a five game skid with Katie Vasilakis. There is the popcorn serve. Outside Russick is off the Lindsay block that's well tooled. And that keeps Miami alive here in the third. And I like that they use the popcorn serve. You would assume for Miami that they're going to go to the middle, and that short serve interrupts the route of the middle, forcing Miami to use one of their pin attackers. So Ball State know where that, knows where that ball's going before it's even set. Maeve McDonald will try to keep this alive for the visiting Red Hawks. Vasilakis, tough first ball. Lindsay out of the back row. And Ball State takes the match. A 3-0 sweep in Muncie tonight. Ball State snaps a five-game skid and deals the Red Hawks just their third MAC loss of the season. The prior two were to Ohio, who's beaten everybody, and Northern Illinois, who's 7-1. Big win for Steve Shondell's bunch tonight. Yeah, I think those stats right there, losing to the top two teams probably in the MAC at the moment. Um, says a lot about the caliber of Miami and about how great of a win this is for Ball State. It's a 